Hey, what's going on DDO players, Axel here. Today I thought I would do something a little bit different and make a video about how I make my videos. So the software I use, the equipment I use, I thought it'd be interesting for, you know, th those of you out there who wanna just try making some videos on the side or just generally interested in how I make my stuff, I thought it'd be fun to talk about and explain. So let's go ahead and get started with the equipment I use. The main microphone I use is a CAD U37 USB mic. It's not an expensive mic. It's only $40. That's what I paid for it when I bought it. Somewhere around there you can find it now. They still sell it. It's not a super high quality mic. It's a decent mic though. The important thing about it is it's a standalone mic. I think that if you're going to make videos, to get good audio, audio quality, you really need a standalone mic. The problem is with, with headsets is while they're convenient, Oftentimes, all the money that goes into the headsets goes into the speakers and not so much the actual microphone. A lot of the microphones on there are pretty cheap. So if you just invest in a solid standalone mic, you'll get much better audio. And if you've noticed the difference in the audio quality in my videos from years ago when I first started till a couple, maybe a year after I started when I actually started using a standalone, a standalone mic regularly, you can definitely tell the difference in sound quality. And occasionally I will still use my headset to make a video but not often. Often it's, if I do a let's play or something, I might use it and I'll probably make a video, a let's play today actually for the anniversary dungeon and do that. But usually 90, you know, 95% of my videos these days that I make, I'm going to use my standalone mic. Another thing that's really important to have if you're going to make, want to get good quality audio is to use a pop filter. Pop filter is this um, black thing right here. That's uh, it's basically a screen between your mouth and the microphone. And it's really important for getting good audio because what it does is it catches all of the breath coming out of your mouth from hitting the microphone. So all your breathing, instead of hitting the microphone and making rustling sounds, it will get blocked out by the pop filter. Also any, any kind of spit or anything like that that's coming out of your mouth, it'll stop that as well. And they're really cheap. The pop filter I have right here is, it cost me like $12, I think but you can get them for as low as $5, just depending on which one you wanna buy. So as I said, sometimes I will use my headset to make a video, occasionally, not often. And when I do, I usually use my gaming headset, which is a SteelSeries V2 USB headset mic combo. It was $70 and I've not been super pleased. It's, it was a decent purchase. I probably wouldn't buy it again, but it's very comfortable. It's good for Let's Plays. It has a good quality audio, but the microphone in it isn't up to par despite it costing $70. The microphone in it is actually very cheap and it doesn't sound too great. That's why I don't like to use it. But as I explained, sometimes it's not feasible to use a standalone mic because the, the mic I use to get good audio quality, I really need to speak right into it. And I can't do that if I'm playing the game at the same time. So headset, of course, is going to be a good option for that. And my headset I also use to actually play the game. So when I'm playing DDO, that's what I use to play the game in voice chat. Obviously, I can't get my mouth all the way up to a mic while I am playing the game. It's just not going to work. That's it for the mic, the mics I use. Now, the webcam I use is a Logitech C920 webcam. It's a, ten, it's a, it's probably, if you check on Amazon, it's probably the most popular 1080p webcam. It's really good quality. It has everything you need. It puts out a really nice quality 1080p picture. It's not going to go up to 4K, but I, you really don't need 4K unless you're just, I really don't think you need 4K, like just if you're just making YouTube videos, but if you want 4K, you might have to go off to invest in something else, but I think 1080p is perfectly fine. The, the webcam costs $70, but it's well worth it. It has a, a nice autofocus feature, which is really, really important. And it also has a cheap little mic built into it, which I would never use to record a video with, but it's convenient if you just want to use it for Skype on the side or something. Okay, then let's talk about software I use. For software, I mainly just use Windows Movie Maker, and that's my main software for editing and audio recording. It's a budget software. It's not super expensive. It's actually completely free. <laughs> It used to come with Windows and I don't think, I don't know if it comes with Windows anymore, but you can go and download it for free. It's easy to use and that's the best draw of it. It's free and it's easy to use. It has very simple recording, splicing, transitions, 
file conversions to YouTube formats, things like that, because you have to actually convert. Uh, if you record a video in Movie Maker, you have to convert it to a file type that YouTube will accept. So it can do all those things. Now it does have its limitations, and because of those limitations, I have considered changing recently to a different a different piece of software. Mainly when it comes to editing and splicing, there's a, as far as I understand it, there's some kind of memory limitation with the software. So you can only splice a certain number of times at any one time, which is pretty, I know that doesn't make it super clear, but it, the splicing features could be better is what I'm trying to say. And it doesn't have all the, the bells and whistles that as far as transitions and effects and things like that, that that a better better software would have it only has very basic transitions and effects so I can't like make an effect in Windows Movie Maker of like fire coming out of my hand if I'm recording myself or something like that it can't do really advanced cool stuff that you see might see a high like high quality production value youtubers doing so that's this drawback but if you're just looking to make videos just on a low to medium production and quality it's plenty good enough for that the next piece of software I use all the time is OBS OBS is one of the most popular software programs for streaming to Twitch and YouTube and for recording gameplay. And I primarily use it for recording gameplay. It's also free, just like Windows Movie Maker. And it's somewhat easy to use. Now, some things you have to do with it, like connecting your OBS to Twitch or to YouTube for streaming, you're probably going to have to look up a guide for if you've never done it before. It's not super straightforward. And also tweaking the settings to get the audio quality or the, the vis visual quality or the webcam quality you want is probably not super straightforward if you haven't done it before you might need a guide for that but for what you're getting it's probably one of it's definitely one of the most simple programs out there and they just I think this year just updated it to OBS studio which has made it I think more straightforward and more more easy to use than it used to be now the last program I use all the time is GIMP and I don't use GIMP nearly as much as I use OBS or Windows Movie Maker and I don't use it for every video but I use it fairly often to make thumbnails or to edit pictures that I might throw in my videos and what GIMP is it's an, it's another free program and it's basically it's basically a program that's similar to Photoshop it's a picture editing program so you can use it for all kinds of all kinds of things to edit basically for any kind of photo editing you want like I said, I've, I primarily use it to edit picture, to throw in my videos, or for thumbnails. The thing about this program, it's free, but I, I'm not sure if I can recommend this. If there's another software or another picture editing program you have, you might want to use that instead. GIMP does what it needs to do, but I just find GIMP overall to be very user unfriendly. I find it overly difficult to use, and I've had to look at a lot of guides to to really learn how to use the software and I still don't know a, a lot of it I still you mostly for the most part just use it for very basic photo editing functions but if you need a free option it is one out there but you might want to research other ones because it's not I wouldn't I don't know if it's the best again it's not very user friendly but if you do want to sink the time into GIMP to really learn all the things it can do it does have a ton of options and a ton of tools uh, similar to Photoshop so let's talk about video creation in general. I myself, I'm not an expert in this. I don't have any formal training or anything like that. I don't have a degree in communications or broadcasting. All my all my degrees are in business, not in broadcasting or, or journalism. But this is not something that you need to have formal training to do. There's a lot of tools out there, a lot of free pieces of software you can use to get started. And it's not expensive to get started. If this is something you want to try, just pick up a webcam if you want, a, a standalone mic and a headset maybe, and download some of this free software and just get started. And if you want to just make some simple videos to upload to YouTube, maybe some Let's Plays, something like that, it's fun to do. It's a fun hobby. YouTube itself, learning to upload videos and learn how to manage and edit you know, manage a YouTube channel is not that hard. YouTube does a pretty good job these days of making things fairly straightforward. So it's not too hard. And I find it to be a very fun and rewarding hobby. I love making videos and that's why I still make videos to this day. And I've been making videos for years now. It's really fun to do. So if you have any interest in it at all, I would encourage you to give it a shot. I know DDO especially could always use more people who want to make content, fan content for the game. It's only going to help the game 
last longer and help the game get more exposure and possibly get more players. And hey, maybe you'll entertain a person or two along the way. That's going to be it for the video, guys. If you have any questions, post them below and I will try to answer them if I can. I usually do a pretty good job of getting around to replying to everyone's comments. But if you have anything or any questions or comments about anything about how I make my videos or what I use, feel free to ask. That's going to be it for the video today, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. Take care. Thank you.